Okay, so we're going to do a video here on the strange features, cool features, and quirks of this 1986 Cadillac Cimarron. I know everybody is just chomping at the bit for this one, and yes, I know I need bumper fillers. Hopefully a friend is going to try to 3D print some. Or if you have some, let me know. Email me at rareclassiccars at yahoo.com. The first thing up front that's kind of a unique feature of this is in 1985, the car got some unique sheet metal with this Cadillac rooftop prow style hood where it kind of rises and then goes back down again on either side. That was something that was added to give the car a bit more Cadillac flair. It's a Cadillac Q. Of course it doesn't have the square wheel arches that were known on Cadillacs. It does have the egg crate grille. It does have the vertical or near vertical backlight eh, to some degree. Kind of similar to the 76 to 79 Seville. But that's the first feature, and then of course there are fog lights down there. Which, that, that maybe that's a Cadillac first, that this car had fog lights. I don't know that other Cadillacs had fog lights before this one. And it had these typical Cadillac bumper guards and that bumper rub strip that they even used back in the 70s on the Seville's and Eldorado's. Those bumper guards were used also even on the 1992 Seville, something similar. So a few little pieces of Cadillac heritage. The next cool feature on this is the white lettered tires. Those are the stock tires for this car. This car has the optional 14 inch rims and they came with Goodyear Eagle GT 205-60 R14 tires. These tires, unfortunately, the car only has 9,000 miles on it, but the car sat for a long time and these tires are shot. I've got one that's definitely bad with a knot in it but I need to replace them. But I wanted to make a few videos at least so people could see them and what they look like up close. And I did, by the way, a friend sent me a link on eBay to one of those center caps. I was missing one, so I'll now have them all, which is awesome. As you can see, these tires have a ton of tread still on them. They're just old and they're dry rotting. The next cool feature about this is this ribbing down here that was also on the 1986 Seville and was really a copy of the earlier Mercedes that had this. Pontiac even used that same theme for its guardrail styling that was introduced in the 1985 Pontiac Grand Dam and became a Pontiac hallmark for many years to come. But here it is on the Cimarron. And if you watch the video with John Manoogian that I've done on it, he talks more about that. John was the assistant chief designer on this particular vehicle for Cadillac. And no, he didn't choose the packaging. And basically he had the opportunity to change in 1982, the wheels, the taillights, the grill, the headlights, and that was about it. Everything else he had to carry over. And that was not his choice in his defense. But I do think that the design team had one feature here that was really unique. These are painted door edge guards. I don't think I've seen that on too many vehicles. Usually they're stainless steel. And then they break up the lines of the car. But here they're painted. And of course, there's a lot of wax. Somebody must have loved this car at some point quite a bit because there's a lot of wax buildup in a number of areas. Next is this mirror here with these strakes. Apparently these were used on other J cars, but it's a neat design feature. I didn't recall those until I saw this car again. And I think it's a cool touch. It looks, it looks rather neat. And of course it's a great looking car. Next is this luggage rack out back, which again, if you watch the video with John Manoogian, he talks about how the Cadillac planning team wanted to put that on in 1982 to make the car look more European. By 1986, it was optional. And I guess the jury's out on the looks of it. I don't mind it. I kind of like it. It gives it some flair. But it's definitely not European. It's kind of humorous. Next is the locking fuel filler door something that you didn't see on the standard Cavaliers and other vehicles, but I guess is a holdover of the OPEC embargo area where people, OPEC embargo era where people would steal gasoline. This car doesn't have a very big tank. It's just a J car. 
but that was an option on these. You do have unique tail lights out back and you do have a unique Cadillac chrome bumper there. Spent a little bit of money and the rotating door here for the trunk lock cylinder. This car is so clean underneath, as you'd expect with only 9,000 miles. You can see the big stabilizer bar on this vehicle as well for handling purposes. It's a pretty big rear stabilizer bar. It just has a standard beam rear axle suspension. But again, look at that. There's no rust to be found anywhere on this. Then of course we have the badge for the 2.8 liter V6, which was optional, made 129 horsepower in this year, and was pretty peppy in this car that only weighed about 2,600 pounds. Gave you a power to weight ratio of about 20, about eight seconds, zero to 60 car, pretty quick for the time. Here we have on the inside a number of cool things. First, let's talk about the door panel, which was unique to the Cimarron. And Cadillac actually spent some money. This is real stitching in here, not fake or vacuum form. This is fake. But all this is real. And it's actually a pretty nice door panel and expensive. Looks handsome as well. The back doors, this one does have the door pull, the separate door pull here. No door pull on the back. It's those finance guys again, those darn finance guys. But they did put a grab handle here, otherwise how else are you going to close the door? And there's no mat pocket here. There is a mat pocket on that front door. This car does have the credit option cloth interior. This is leather on the sides, cloth, and then the, outside the seating areas, this is vinyl. So it's these seats are shockingly sporty. This is pretty good bolstering, I mean, for the era, certainly not today and certainly not sports car like, but pretty good for 1986. And also very narrow seats, not overly wide. They really hug you. Next is the headlight control. You can see here, here's the fog light control that you turn on and off when you put the fog lights on you get that little dashboard indicator that says fog lights. How cool is that? This headlight switch apparently is also unique to Cadillac Cimarron's and a lot of these buttons are missing but on this car they're still here both there and on the lighter. If you watch the video on Tony's car care Tony glued those back on for me thankfully the owner saved them they had fallen off. Next you have the coin holder for back in the day, the toll plazas, pretty handy and convenient on the center console that I always used to think it was just stopped here, but it actually goes all the way back and you know here under the armrest with the emergency brake. So it's a decent sized center console. You also have electronic activation on the climate control here, where the mode door you push the button and it changes and the fan you push this button and it goes up or down as opposed to the typical GM slider bars of this era and this also isn't cable op operated this is electronic too when you move this there's no cable behind there so it's really low effort you can see I'm just barely touching it and it moves gotta get the air conditioning working in this car that'll be a project the car does have symphony sound I believe this was standard in this vehicle a little bit different Cadillac font on the numerals than the standard GM radios in the other divisions. I don't know why Cadillac thought that that was an exclusive. The faceplate on this is basically identical to the other Delco radios, but these numerals are different. They do look better. I'll give it that. And you have these vents that I think are from the Seville and Eldorado. Cadillac used that style vents for a number of years. And you have, this looks like it's a joystick, manual mirror control, but it's electronic. It's a pretty cheap feeling control, but it does move the, hear it? Move the mirror. 
down there. This car does have a tilt wheel, unique steering wheel, leather wrapped, very nice. It does have engine starting instructions. I gotta get the headliner replaced here, but it's pretty funny that it's behind this visor vanity mirror. Little glove box and a trunk release. You also have the original owner's manual for this car and papers. Pretty cool. And the world's smallest rear view mirror. That maybe that's eight inches. It is not very wide at all. I don't think I've seen a rear view mirror that's smaller than that. But it works in this car because the car isn't very big. Another unique feature is this flocked pillar trim. It goes all the way back. All the way back. I have never seen this all the way back on another vehicle. Maybe the Fleetwood Talismans. You know, I shouldn't say never. But it's pretty rare. I like how they have that, but they have the exposed Phillips head screws. Including the Mir shark fin has that flocking on it too. Next, I gotta say, this is the weirdest floor mats I've ever seen. They're reversible. They have carpet on both sides. Ooh, that's dirty. I have to vacuum that. And they have this gripper thing that you can flip from side to side so the mat doesn't move. I have never seen anything like that in my life on any car. If you have, let me know, but that is nuts. I've never seen a reversible carpet on carpet floor mat with this gripper thing, which you need because carpet on carpet can move. So I don't know what the purpose it was of this. Keep one side nasty, one side nice. But it's definitely there. And you also have handy dandy assist handles at every door, aside from the driver's door, in case you go flying around corners in your Cimarron, which I'm sure people would do. And Cadillac Gold Keys. They had the gold key delivery system during these years. And you got gold keys with it. How cool is that? The trunk on these, let's pop the trunk, is actually a decent size. And this one's got the original floor mat as well. You can fit quite a bit back here. It's decently trimmed too, and there's a shop manual for the car. And close it by the luggage rack. So overall, just a fun little car. I thought I would, again, share some of the strange and cool features and quirks. You even have the Hoffmeister kink here, similar to the BMWs of the era on, this, on all of the J cars actually. And Cadillac and GM was, for whatever reason, proud of this A-pillar that tucked under the fender here. I don't know why they were so proud of that, but in some dealer training videos, they highlighted it. And actually, on this car, the gaps, the door gaps and everything, they're a bit large, but they're not bad. They're, everything fits well. The car doors close well. So stay tuned for more as I fix this vehicle up. Thanks for watching this video on the 1986 Cimarron. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to also check out some videos about this specific car on another YouTube channel, Tony's Car Care. Tony picked the car up for me, and you can see the pickup as well as some of the things that he fixed already for me on it. Thanks again for watching.